10.3 practice. So we're gonna work out some problems. So use prom for problems one through three, find the Taylor polynomial of order four, function x equals zero, use it to evaluate, yada, yada. All right, plug in zero, we get one. Do the first derivative and plug in zero, we get negative pi over two sine of pi x over two. And when we plug in zero, we get sine of zero, of course. F double prime of zero equals negative pi squared over four cosine pi x over two. Plug in zero and we get, interesting, we get a negative pi squared over four. F triple prime of zero equals pi to the third over eight sine pi x over two equals zero. And f fourth of zero equals pi to the fourth over 16 cosine pi x over two equals pi to the fourth over 16. So the fourth order polynomial is one, pardon me, that's a order four, fourth order polynomial, yes. Sorry, I was thinking that was four terms. I continue to mess that up. One uh, plus zero minus pi squared over four times x squared over two factorial plus zero plus pi to the fourth, x to the fourth over 16 times four factorial. I really shouldn't put the times there, I really should put it up there. Uh, and we can combine that if you want. If you got to combine, that's great. I believe that's three, 384 and that's eight. Um, so then when we plug in 0 0.2, we get 0 0.95. One, one, which is interesting, but not the end of the world. All right, next one. F of zero equals <laughs> zero. F prime of zero equals two X over one plus X squared equals zero. F double prime of zero equals one plus x squared times two minus two x times two x. One plus x squared squared. Which equals negative two x squared plus two, one plus x squared squared, which when we plug in zero is two. All right, uh, I think I got real lazy after that and just said, we're gonna get eventually to fourth order x squared minus x to the fourth over two. And then P of 0 0.2 equals 0 0.0396. Right. One minus X to the negative second. F of zero equals one. F prime of zero equals two times one minus X to the negative third equals two. F double prime of zero equals six times one minus X to the negative fourth equals six. F 
triple prime of zero equals 24, one minus x to the negative fifth equals 24, f equals 120. And 20. P4 of x equals 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x to the third plus 5x to the fourth. And then P4 of 0 0.2 equals. 1.56. All right, find the Maclaurin series set at zero for the function. Well, we know that e to the x equals one plus x plus x squared over two factorial over three factorial plus x to the n over n factorial, which is the same as sum from n equals zero to infinity. x to the n over n factorial. Therefore, x e to the x equals x plus x squared plus x to the third over two factorial plus dot 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 x to the n plus one over n factorial plus which is the sum from n equals zero to infinity x to the n plus one over n factorial sine squared of x now here i had the original e to the x here i have sine squared of x i could write the first four terms start foiling like mad and see if i see a pattern that's probably asking a little bit too much of me so f of zero equals zero f prime of zero equals two sine of x cosine of x equals zero f double prime of zero equals two sine of x negative sine of x plus two cosine of x cosine of x equals negative two sine squared x plus two cosine squared x Looks like I can eliminate it, but I can't. Plug in zero, gone, and I get two. F triple prime of zero. I am shortcutting after you blast it all out with your two chain rules here. I won't shortcut it all right out. Negative four sine of x cosine of x plus four cosine of x negative sine of x equals negative eight sine of x cosine of x plug in zero we get zero and finally f four of x my hands are actually cramping up here equals negative eight sine of x negative sine of x plus negative eight cosine of x cosine of x equals eight sine squared x which is going to be zero minus eight cosine squared x is going to be one times negative eight negative eight So sine squared x two x squared over two factorial minus eight 
x to the fourth over four factorial because of the zero, zero, zero. That's a lot of work. Plus dot, 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 negative one to the n, two to the two n plus one, x to the two n plus two, Zeroth term one, two, two, all right, two of the first, I mean, over two n plus two factorial. How did I figure all this out? Yeah, I don't know. Um, equals sum n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n. Two to the two n plus one, x to the two n plus two, two n plus two factorial. Alrighty. Okay. Oh, I didn't show everything. My apologies. Ran out of space a little bit there. There it is. Wrote it all out. Okay, so this one, I'm just gonna break out this part. One over one minus two X is um, just that's first term and then we're multiplying by two X, not negative two X. Two X plus two X squared plus two X to the third, dot, dot, dot. And then we throw the X squared on top. That means that's my first term, X squared plus, 2x to the third plus 4x to the fifth, fourth, fourth, yeah, fourth plus 8x to the fifth. So that would be 2 to the n, 1, 0, 1, 2 squared, 3, 1, 2, 3, yeah, x to the 0, n plus 2. And there's no factorial. n equals zero to infinity, two to the n, two to the n plus two. Wow, this is fun. Not. Onwards. Use graphs to find a tail polynomial. Pn of x for cosine of x to that. The difference between the polynomial and cosine of x is less than 0 0.001. So here's what I am going to tell you to do. Use a calculator. And program. Y1 equals sum, just like this, negative one to the n, x to the two n over two n factorial. So plug in the worst case scenario here is Pi or negative pi, we'll just use pi. Y1 of pi minus cosine of pi. So that's your actual value, that's your 10 iterations. And we get 7.5 times 10 to the negative 11th. So that is significantly, that's 0.0034567891. That's way too good. So I played with this and uh, what I recommend is you change the top there. Try six.
copy that command, plug it in again if you want, but copy. And you should get 1.005 times 10 to the negative fourth. One, two, three, one, all right? So your six degree polynomial should be sufficient. I would also plug, plug in negative pi and see if that makes a difference. It shouldn't because this is a uh, even function. Um, so it shouldn't matter at all. Find a formula for the truncation error if we use p to the six x to approximate one over one minus two x. So this is a geometric, so we can just pull it. All right, so one over one minus two x equals one plus two of x plus two of x squared, two x to the third, 2x to the sixth, right? If we're using six terms. So the error is the absolute value of 2x to the seventh plus 2x to the eighth plus forever. And that equals first term two to the seventh which is uh, 128, 128. I better double check that. I trust my brain, which is not that much. Yeah, I got it right. X to the seventh over one minus two X. All right, which if I plug in and a formula. No, they don't want the actual error on one half to one half. So no, I don't even have to plug this in. They're just saying find a formula. That's it, we're done. Now that's it. If you wanna make it a little simpler looking, you do not have to do this. Um, you could go with, uh, yes, I'm getting rid of the absolute values, two absolute value of X. To the seventh over one minus two X. Sure, you understand the seventh in there, but this is fine with me, and I would not make that extra step unless I had a really good reason. All right, same problem formula for the truncation error if we use P9. So I'm not going to show it all again. The truncation error for this one this is the initial geometric one. It's just going to be x to the 10th plus x to the 11th plus x to the 12th plus dot dot dot. First term is x to the 10th, so x to the 10th over 1 minus x. Done. Oh, that's to a positive value. Um, yeah, we suppose we could go with this. Yeah, I would get the same answer but I would just leave it in absolute values. That's how we do a truncation error. I think we're almost, yeah, that's the last one. Cosine of X is replaced by the first two terms, cosine of X. What estimate can be made of the error? Does it tend to be too large or too small? Well, it all depends. So we're going absolute value of X is less than 0 0.5. So we should put in negative 0.5 or 0 0.5. Um, keep life simple now. We're just gonna put in uh, 0 0.5. So one minus 0 0.5 squared over two, in case you're wondering where that came from, it's right here, it is 0 0.875. Now this is cosine, so if I put in my calculator, cosine of 0 0.5, I get 0 0.8776. If we slap that together, I get, and I did round one more decimal just because, 0 0.875, the value we got minus the correct answer, 0 0.8776. Absolute value of it, we get 0 0.003.
So. The next term is going to be x to the fourth over four factorial. All right, it's going to be positive. It's going to be positive, so it's going to oscillate. So we should be at 0.8776. We're a little bit below it. It's going to go above it. So it'll become too positive. And then after x to the 6 over 6 factorial, that's positive. We subtract that too small. Now, it's not clear what they're asking for. Are they saying, is our answer accurate enough? Is it too big an error or too small an error? No, what they're clearly, what they appear to be saying is, are we above or below? So we were below, after that we'd be above, after that we'd be below, but it'd be going closer and closer, All right? So, personally for most engineering work I do, this would be more than close enough to use this instead of this if I, forgot my handy dandy calculator somewhere. This would give me a nice estimate that's really close. However, if we look at it from the AP exam, we would say, no, that's not good enough because this is uh, not under 0.000. I would go with uh, 0.0004 because anything above that would affect this decimal place. And we know that's what we're supposed to round to on the AP test. So here's a practice quiz. Uh, I'm not gonna blow through it super fast, but I am gonna keep moving. So, highly recommend you do this before you take the real quiz. It'll kind of tie together the kind of questions you're gonna get asked. Approximate ln zero by using third order Taylor polynomials. This one's a little tricky. We know that ln of uh, one plus X is, I don't even remember this. I should know this. Well, now I just gotta go back. Um, it's the integral of one plus minus X plus X squared minus X to the third dot, dot, dot. So integrate that we get x minus x squared over two plus x to the third over three. So yeah, we really should have this memorized, but this would be one over one plus x. And then the integral of that is right there. All right, so one plus x has to equal 0 0.44. So x is negative. 0 0.556, that's kind of important to understand. So we get that uh, negative 0 0.556 minus negative 0 0.556 squared over two plus negative 0 0.556 to the third over three, which is negative 0 0.768 rounded to three decimal places. So we've approximated this, not just for the fun of it. Let's see how we did. No, you don't need to do this on your test. Natural log of 0.123, because I should be close. Oof, that's horrible, negative 0.8. Oof, that's horrible. Let's see if I get closer, if I go negative 0.768, what would the next term be? Minus uh, negative 0.556 to the fourth divided by four point seven nine one eight get a little bit closer but yeah not a lot closer wow i'm impressed at how hard it is how long it takes for this to approximate i guess point four 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 or point five five six pretty far from the center of zero oh, whatever get the limit of partial sums term of the series converges to divergence 
So here it is, it's listed out for you. And I noticed that they're always multiplying by negative five, uh, probably negative one third. Five's just there. So the sum is the first term over one minus the R value, negative three. That's horrible. Negative one third plus plus three over three uh, equals five over four thirds, which is 15 fourths. And yes, therefore converges. Our value is less than one, or the absolute value of R is less than one. Off you go. Find the McLaurin series for e to the x, write the answer as the general term. But I like to put it all out there, not really try and shortcut anything. e to the x equals one plus x plus x squared over two factorial plus x to the third, three factorial, dot, dot, dot. e to the three x equals one plus three x plus three x squared over two factorial plus three x to the third over three factorial, dot, dot, dot. Okay, well, yeah, let's actually write it out. Um, the general term, oh, then they want, yeah. Uh, what do we got here? I'm gonna write out both terms. No, I'm not sure what they mean. I'll write it out this way, it's otherwise the same thing. N equals zero to infinity. 3x to the n, yes, I could write 3 to the n, x to the n, which I like to do a lot of times. Cool. Find the Taylor polynomial of third order for this function. f of zero equals negative one half. f prime of zero equals negative x minus two to the negative two equals negative one fourth f double prime of zero equals two x minus two to the negative third equals negative two eighths. Which I'm not gonna reduce just yet. F triple prime of zero third order. Uh, I think that's the last one I have to do. Equals negative six x minus two to the negative fourth, which is negative six over 16. So from the Taylor of third order, P three of x equals, uh, brain cramp, yes, negative one half plus negative one fourth x, Okay, yeah, it's coming back. Minus two ace x squared over two factorial minus six over 16 x to the third centered at zero for three factorial. Cancel, 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 cancel. Not that we cancel. P three of x equals. Some people have asked me, can I factor out that negative? Don't. At this point, everybody says, oh, I'll write the general term. That's not what it asked. Just ask for the third order. All right, have x equal e to the x, but this time's at e to the fourth. Well, um, put in four. P of four, uh, if we, f of four is e to the fourth. F prime of four is e to the fourth. The prime of four, e to the fourth. F triple prime of four, e to the fourth. So the fourth order, the third order, helps if you read the question, is e to the fourth plus e to the fourth x plus e to the fourth x squared over two factorial plus e to the fourth x to the third for three factorial. 
except it's not. I forgot it's centered at x equals four. P to the third of x equals e to the fourth plus e to the fourth, x minus four plus e to the fourth, x minus four factorial plus e to the fourth, x minus four, three factorial. My hand is a hurting. Find the fourth order or tail polynomial of sine of x and use it to approximate the value of sine of 1.57. So I don't have to do all the fancy work because I already got this one memorized. We're out to seven decimal places. I find that funny. Sine of x equals x minus x to the third over three factorial. Find the fourth order tail polynomial. This is a very good AP problem. The next one would be x to the fifth over five factorial. That's too big. So now we use that to approximate 1.57, which I believe is pi over two, which should get us one, equals 1.57 minus 1.57 to the third over three factorial. I think two terms will be meh in terms of getting us accurate. So I said seven insane decimal places, nine, two, five, zero, one, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Craziness. Find the general term of the Taylor series. So it's actually in the quorum, but Taylor is not out inaccurate. So sine of x equals one minus x squared over two factorial plus x to the fourth over four factorial minus x to the sixth over six factorial dot 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 equals the sum from n equals zero infinity negative one to the n x to the 2n over 2n factorial. Find the first four non-zero terms of the Maclaurin expansion of arctangent of x squared. Hmm. That's right, we don't know tan of x, we know arctangent of x. I haven't been over my Maclaurin series in a little while. So, first four non zero terms. Uh, I think it's going to be fourth. No, it's going to be 14 when I'm done with it. So, instead of x, we plug in x squared. x squared minus x to the sixth over three plus x to the tenth over five minus x to the 14th over seven. Found the general term of the Maclaurin series for one over x minus three. Let's see, f of zero equals negative one third, f prime of zero, equals, and I'm gonna get, I was gonna get lazy, but I'm not, squared, negative one ninth, I really should put an arrowhead there, f double prime of zero equals two x minus three to the third, negative two twenty-seven. So the McLaurin series, the polynomial, negative one third, minus uh, 
I'm going to leave it as a plus negative one ninth x minus, I'm going to go plus negative two over 27 x squared over two factorial. I think I see where this is going. Sum from n equals zero to infinity. Always negative, so negative zero, one. I actually have this written differently. I'm going to go with this one, x to the n over 3 to the n plus 1. Challenging math. And find the interval of convergence for the geometric series. So interval of convergence is a lesson coming up. I put this in just to keep you on your toes. Uh, that's your r that you're multiplying by up every time. We know the absolute value of r has to be less than one. So we just go with five x plus one. Negative one less than five x plus one, less than one. Negative two less than five x, less than zero. Negative two fifths less than x, less than zero. That is our interval of convergence. Turn the interval divergence of the geometric series. <laughs> same thing, exact same problem. Multiplying up by a three X every time, it's gonna be less than one. Negative one is less than three X, less than one. Divide by three, divide by three, divide by three. Negative one third, less than X, less than one. Third. Find the quadratic. So important in RTFQ, these problems. Arc tangent of 9x. Well, arc tangent of 9x. Would be uh, 9x minus 9x to the third over 3 plus, wait a minute, quadratic. It's, See the rest of you. It's just 9x. You might say, well, only plug in zero. No, that means it's centered at zero. It doesn't mean plug in zero. That's confusing. Yeah, I know. Find the coefficient of x to the fourth in the McLaurin series generated by this. Well, I know it's just e to the x. Now I'm plugging in two X for X. So two X to the fourth over four. And that is two times four times four is 16. X to the fourth over four times three times two times one. Which four, two, two gives me two thirds X to the fourth. The answer is two thirds because they just want the coefficient. Determine of terms of the McLaurin series for edX and the approximate value within three decimal places. Uh, I'm not going to mess with this. Uh, you need to. So I just played with it uh, and I found that seven terms. So we needed E. The first equals one plus one plus one half plus one six plus two, three, four, one. Boy, my brain is not working today. Two factorial, three factorial, fourth factorial, four times three is 12 times two is 24. Four, geez, Louise. One, two, three, four, five. Two more terms. Five factorial, 120, plus six factorial, 720. That gives me right, 2.717, 3.5. 
three decimal places and E it is 2.718 okay. within three. So seven, I guess you could actually say eight terms. I would accept either one. Finding a mistake in my notes, I'm trying to figure it out. Now, well, so this is actually 2.718. So it is seven terms. I miscopied that from my notes. Cool. All right. Geometric child smooths out a sweep of 20 feet on the first pass. So how to show this? It doesn't matter. It goes 20 feet out. And then three fifths of the distance on the next one. 12 and then three fifths on the next one. Seven point two. Dot dot dot. So this is just sum from infinity. First term one minus three fifths. Five over five. Twenty over two fifths. Fifty feet. Watch your units. One more. Determine if this converges or diverges. And if so, find the exact sum. Well, for finding the exact sum, it's got to be geometric. And I believe that we're looking at a first term. I really should say one. 0 0.11. And then each time you go 0 0.011 again. So it's dividing by 100. So R is 100. So that A2 is 0 0.0011 and A3 is 0 0.00011. Yeah, that works. So the sum of all of them is the first term, one minus one over 100. Blast it out with the calculator, 11 over 99. For the next one, it is being multiplied by negative three each time. So the R equals negative three. Negative three is absolute value of negative three is greater than one. It diverges. And then a little practice with your algebraic term writing. Well, it alternates and it starts at one. So the first one is just some write the expression general nth term from n equals, you know, I'm going to write it with zero to infinity because then I can just go negative one to the n. It's nine every time. So I'm looking at a nine on top and then on the bottom keeps multiplying by five or five to the n. And I got checked as zero. So that's one. So the first, zero, one, two, yep, that works. That's a lot of work. Good luck.